It has been over one month since I started using Apple's new M2 Pro Mac Mini, and while it's not a perfect computer, something about it really surprised me. I stopped noticing it was even there. Now, I'm not talking about the small size of this device or how quiet it runs, both of which are true, but what I'm really referring to is how this device sat in place of my $7,000 configuration Mac Studio for over one month, and I didn't even notice the difference. Sometimes you do want to notice things though, like cyber criminals attempting to steal your data, or sneaky viruses or malware that make their way onto your computer. And for that, you need to check out Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite. Threats online can come from multiple directions. First of all, they can nestle into your computer as malware that hog your computer's vital resources, and Trend Micro's antivirus takes care of that quickly by scanning your computer for threats that may already be on your system and also scanning for real-time threats when you're browsing the web. And these threats aren't just on your computer. They are on your phone too, and Trend Micro's mobile security helps me tackle these security threats easily with built-in screening features and provides actual steps on how to fix some overlooked issues. And it's loaded with features. A few of my favorites are a Wi-Fi checker to check if your current Wi-Fi connection is secure, which is great because I'm always hopping to like different cafes or going to the airport, and it's always good to know that public Wi-Fi networks are actually secure. A built-in safe surfing that instantly blocks unsafe websites, trackers, and allows you to instantly turn off those annoying ads on these mobile websites with just a tap. The suite also comes with Trend Micro's ID security, which is constantly monitoring accounts like your email, banking, credit card, social security number, and even more. So if there's like a compromised dark web leak, you can see it. To learn more and to protect yourself, click the link in the description. And thank you to Trend Micro for keeping me protected and also for sponsoring this video. Now, before I purchased this Mac Mini, I knew a few things going into it. I knew that the design was going to be something I was very used to because it's basically on change from Mac Mini designs from the past decade. I also knew that it would come with a more robust port selection uh, than the cheaper entry-level Mac Mini option, with Apple providing an extra two high-speed Thunderbolt ports to this device, which are appreciated. Now, yes, to be fair, there were a few surprises I didn't really call. I did not expect Apple to adopt the new HDMI 2.1 port into this Mac Mini, letting this small desktop drive up to an 8K display or faster 4K monitors with higher refresh rates. My own use case, I usually don't hook this up to other monitors besides my studio display, but I did actually put this on my 42-inch LG OLED TV, which I do use as a gaming monitor and that does have 4K at 120 hertz. And yeah, it's a very smooth uh, experience. It, these screens now with these faster refresh rates, we're kind of getting used to them. We have them on our smartphones, our tablets, even our laptops now. So this was a pleasant surprise. It opens up this Mac to a broader option of monitors, which is important because the Mac mini is a desktop Mac. You're gonna have to hook it up to a monitor. So if you have a monitor, you're like, this thing can probably hook up to it. But that also means that you do have to provide your own accessories for this Mac. And yeah, that does mean a display, a keyboard, and a mouse. Now, there are obvious pros and cons to this. The pros to this is that unlike an iMac, you get to choose your accessories and specs that matter to you. So is a 24 inch display too small? Well, get a 32 inch display. Do you want a faster refresh rate display or one with a higher or maybe even a lower resolution? Well, you get to make all those calls while getting this computer with a more powerful chip and double the storage and double the memory for the same price as a 24 inch iMac. But there's cons to that, right? It's not an all-in-one. And it requires not only more money to buy these accessories if you don't already own them, but it also requires more thought in what accessories you might choose. And while I do love the Mini, it's this part of the equation where you can start to add up on spending a lot on a setup. Like as an Apple person, I am lucky enough that I already had a display that I liked. I, I'm sure you can guess it, that's Apple's 5K studio display. But like if I was buying that on my own to purchase with this Mac mini, that would be a lot of money up front. Now, while it's not an all-in-one, I do think setting this up is very easy. Uh, it certainly was for me. Maybe if your setup's different, maybe it'll be a little bit more work. But for me, basically all I had to do was unplug the Thunderbolt cable that was connected to my Mac Studio to the studio display, uh, plug the Mac Mini into the wall, then connect that Thunderbolt cable into the Mac Mini, turn it on, and yeah, I was ready to go pretty much. And then I just started setting up the Mac Mini. So I felt like that was pretty easy. And I, I feel like, you know, it's not that complex. It just requires a little bit more thought on what kind of accessories you're going to pick for this device. 
Uh, if you wanna know what accessories I picked or kind of see more of my setup, I actually made a dedicated video going over my M2 Pro Mac Mini setup, which I will leave right here. Now, the reward for this little bit of extra work though is a computer unlike anything Apple has made in the past decade. And I've been around long enough to know that the Apple community has been asking for a desktop computer like this forever. And while attempts were made with previous versions of the Mac Mini and even some iterations of the Mac Pro, Apple has never succeeded at delivering a pro-level desktop below $1,500. That could fit the needs of two markets, pros and hobbyists. Previous iterations were either too underpowered to be considered for the demands of too many pro users or too expensive to be considered for hobbyists or prosumers that needed more power. This time, they brought what they did with the Mac Studio and basically gave it to us at an even lower and an even more attainable price point. This new M2 Pro Mini is, as Steve Jobs used to say, a screamer. It handles basic tasks with very fast speed. It's very snappy. It opens apps in like just a click. Uh, and when it comes to even more heavier or demanding tasks, the M2 Pro chip is well suited for both fast multi-core CPU performance and it even does hold its weight with lighter GPU related tasks. I don't wanna go over the same benchmarks that I, I've already done for so many of my other videos, uh, but in short, this Mac can be well suited for things like video editing, development, music production, and it's super fast in benchmarks like building out code in Xcode. And in my own experience, the base model goes through Final Cut Pro video editing like butter, even without the more expensive upgrades of more memory or the faster CPU. And it really was in that month period of using this Mac Mini that I realized that even though it lacked a lot of the pro specs that I had put into my Mac Studio, it felt the same when it came to timeline performance, and even though other scientific testing like export times were still faster on the Mac Studio, I kind of questioned if it was really worth all of that additional money. But still, this is a device that does hold its own against the Mac Studio at one-fifth the price, even more than one-fifth the price. If you came into my studio and secretly taped the Mac Mini under my desk and swapped the cables from the Mac Studio, I'm honestly not sure how long it would take me to notice that I was connected to the Mac Mini. And the fact that this Mac, which again, costs about the same as Apple's entry-level iMac can do that, really impressed me. And that's really just the start. Again, this is the weakest base-level Mac Mini, so you could get an even better system that is closer to a Mac Studio by upgrading the memory or putting in an even more powerful version of the M2 Pro chip. And you can even like match the spec for spec with storage on the Mac Mini, you can bump this up all the way to eight terabytes. Now, are there downsides to using the base level? Yeah, if I really went crazy and left like a bunch of pro applications open at once or had a bunch of tabs open when I was doing my work, I'm sure I could put pressure on that 16 gigabytes of memory. But the biggest hassle to me by far would be the limited amount of storage for storing video files on this device without like an external four terabyte SSD that I was using when I was reviewing this Mac Mini. I would have ran out of space on this device within the first week of editing videos on it. Still, it's hard to complain when you can fix a lot of these situations pretty easily. Like I said, you could just buy external storage. It's really not that much to get external SSD storage nowadays. And even design complaints that I had, like the lack of front ports on the Mac Mini or the lack of an SD card slot was also, in truth, a pretty easy problem to correct with just a few clicks on Amazon. So did Apple make a pro-level Mac at just $1,300? Well, while this Mac isn't perfect and still has some shortcomings that wouldn't make it a good choice for every user, especially if you rely on heavy GPU usage, I do think that this is a pro-level Mac. And it's finally a mid-range Mac that can be used in a lot of scenarios. And this should be the first stop for anyone looking for a Mac desktop for creative work. All right, but that's enough for me. You don't want to hear me anymore. I actually want to hear from you. So let me know in the comments below. What do you think of this new M2 Pro Mac Mini? Do you think this actually lives up to the name of a pro level Mac desktop? Also, if you like this video, you know what to do. Make sure you give me a like. If you want to see more from the channel, make sure you're subscribed and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.